Hello again, I'm Grant Abbott, you're watching Gabbett Media, and this is Sculpt January number 13, which was empty. And you can see that I've done an empty kind of tree man monster. It used to be called tree men uh, when I was doing Warhammer Fantasy Battle back in the day. Uh, they were wood elves. A friend of ours had a wood elf army and the tree man was quite a scary, scary foe it was. So I started this one with the uh, skin modifier. Uh, you can see all the links in the description for um, all these um, techniques that I'm using here uh, for starting base meshes. Uh, there is a sort of sculpting course I should say, it's not really a course, but uh, sculpting guides on my website. Uh, so do get across there if you've got any questions. That doesn't make sense. Do get across there to have a go at that. If you've got any questions, you can go and chat to me on the Discord server or you can comment below. Uh, so this was quite a fun one. It took, uh, well, recording time was two and a half hours. So it probably took about three to three and a half. That's not too bad. I can cope with that. Although I had a bad day. Uh, where the car broke down and it was all panic and I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to do Sculpt January anymore. I didn't actually use that voice, uh, luckily. But now I've just used it in front of YouTube. I'm going to be memed again. Uh, yeah, the car broke down, so uh, it was all panic. But uh, having a three-hour Sculpt, three-and-a-half-hour Sculpt, uh, not uh, that's, that's doable uh, with other stuff going on. Uh, so I'm happy that I'm getting slightly ahead of myself not very far um, so this is today's sculpt that I was just completing this morning so what are we we're eight o'clock at the moment uh, and uh, yeah hopefully I'll have time to do tomorrow's sculpt so I won't have uh, too much to do in lunchtime at college and that sort of thing I think I've got a meeting tomorrow and in lunch at college. Now I'm rambling already. I haven't even started and I'm rambling. Anyway, um, so I thought um, posing the model I think is so important for just a sculpt. Obviously you put it in a T-pose if you're doing it for games and things, but if you're doing just a sculpt, let's say for 3D printing or something like that, or you just want it to look cool, then posing a model I think makes a big difference. And that's why I've been putting a lot of emphasis on posing uh, this time around in Sculpt January 2019. Uh, so I made my own little rig for um, this weird character and I wanted to put him into a, an interesting pose. Uh, that's a classic mistake is um, posing from the front and not the side um, and actually sculpting from the front and not the sides. So you see lots of uh, human figures uh, from beginners that look great from the front and then when they go around to the side it's just really flat. Uh, so do think about the 3D shape uh, entirely and think about your silhouettes and get that basic outline first. I, I spent a fair bit of time getting my basic outline on this one, but then I did up the detail level quite early on, I would say, for me anyway. Uh, and I thought, well, I'm just going to go for it because I'm happy with the silhouette. Uh, I'm going to miss out a little bit of that mid level because I was fairly happy. Um, and I just thought I'll, I'll go for it. I mean, I, I, like I said, I did spend a lot of time on the base mesh anyway. Uh, so you could argue that that was the mid-level and uh, then go quite high with the detail. And I could have gone higher, but my computer lags a bit, you know. <clears throat> so what can you do, eh? Uh, someone did ask me actually about uh, computers and uh, do I need a fast computer? Uh, yes, is the answer. Uh, the faster, the better. Uh, and uh, Blender, or any 3D program, in fact, uh, will kick any computer's ass. Uh, that's just how it is. Uh, so the faster you can get your computer, the better. Uh, but do you? Um, <clears throat> it's like the do you need or do you want a fast computer? And uh, it's helpful, but in terms of uh, your skill level is more important. Uh, uh, practicing your sculpts and all that sort of thing, uh, and uh, modeling skills uh, are far more important. Uh, so you don't absolutely have to have a fast computer to get into 3D sculpting. You can have a fairly basic computer, uh, well, 2.8 coming along, I, th I think that's gonna be tough for some computers, but a fairly basic computer, like my laptop at school, is not great. It's reasonably decent, but not great. Um, and, and that's running Blender just fine. I haven't tried 2.8 on it because they won't let me install it. Is it for Peter? Uh, so um, we'll wait and see for that one. Uh, anyway, uh, so yes, good computer. Uh, is great, fast, fast as possible that you can afford, 
uh, is great, but it's not uh, the be-all and end-all of a, a 3D career or 3D modeler. Uh, it's all about your skill level. And if you haven't got a fast computer, then uh, do low poly work uh, and uh, try and get your skills in uh, trying to uh, visualize shapes in objects. If you're good at low poly, then it's not too big a step to get good at the sculpting and the high poly uh, work, in my opinion. Okay, so how are we getting on? Yep, so still working on that base level of detail. There's probably a few pauses in here every now and again, like here, and this one seems to be going on for ages. But every now and, every now and again, I quickly look at some reference images and have a, a sort of good study uh, for a moment. Uh, so this is uh, not sped up. That's the right way of putting it, yep. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that much, this is 750%, so it's a bit slower than I usually put them up to. Um, because it didn't take so long and people are saying they, they didn't mind sort of longer videos and some preferred that uh, so it was a small percentage but I, I thought uh, those who aren't uh, who don't want longer videos uh, you can just sort of put it on twice the speed really in a sense can't you uh, and then watch a 10 minute video um, that's how I watch um, YouTube videos a lot of times put them on double speed um, especially if it's not someone that's uh, talking really quickly. <laughs> I know it sounds odd, but if you put them at double speed, you can kind of learn at twice the rate. Now that sounds silly, but um, it's I find it really helpful because a lot of the time, um, <clears throat> their YouTube videos and tutorials can be a bit slow and sluggish. Uh, so, uh, but still really helpful. Uh, so putting them on twice speed, especially if you're a little bit experienced as well, because usually you can uh, you know what they're talking about, and there might be a few nuggets in there of information that you haven't seen before so um, uh, putting them on twice speed is is uh, helpful if you're experienced um, yeah there was a bit of a glitch just there actually uh, which was frustrating I lost a bit of work and I didn't realize for ages I, um, I pressed the undo button a couple of times and if you're in sculpting mode and you do a bit of sculpting and then you go back to layout mode and you press undo it undoes all of your sculpting uh, not just the last sculpt you did, uh, which kind of makes sense in a weird, weird, weird way, but uh, it's frustrating. I think I did something like that by accident and lost a bit of work. And I quite like that bit of work. You know, when you do something, and you think, oh, I, I quite like what I've done there. I'll, I'm happy with that. And then you actually usually press save straight after. Oh, I'm pleased with how this is going. Uh, I lost that bit um, and I didn't get it back, I don't think. I didn't really sort of reproduce it. Um, it, it I just sort of kind of forgot what I did. Uh, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out. It was good fun. It, yeah, I like this sort of thing because very organic and uh, nature is quite nice because you can be very free flowing and just draw shapes all over the place and they often work. Uh, sometimes they don't. You think, why is this not working? And that's frustrating uh, because it actually, when I was like, when I was doing the rotten and I was doing the rotten apple and I was thinking, this just isn't working. And I don't think it really worked in the end either. So uh, that was a frustration one, and that was a nature one, so you'd think that would work. <laughs> uh, I think also uh, what I've found is that uh, I've been baking, uh, in not cakes, uh, I've been baking uh, the cavity map and the ambient occlusion map together into one map for my low poly objects. And in this one I separated them out so that I had more control, and I should have done that with all my previous sculpts, it's much better. It just takes a bit longer. The ambient occlusion takes ages to bake in 2.8, but it's much nicer in 2.8. It's really awkward in cycles in um, 2.79, the uh, trying to get the ambient occlusion uh, working. The ambient occlusion node is much better than the sort of ambient occlusion um, that is in uh, 2.79, uh, but it takes uh, it takes about five minutes to bake. Um, it does sound weird, doesn't it? Baking. For like five minutes in the oven, it'd be lovely. Uh, someone did say uh, it was Gordon Ramsay. I'm supposed to look like. Um, I'm nothing like Gordon Ramsay, uh, but apparently I look like him uh, and sound a bit like him, supposedly. Anyway, and uh, speaking of baking, that's why I went on to Gordon Ramsay. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, someone suggested that I did a Gordon Ramsay on uh, everybody's work uh, when they enter the competitions and just go uh, really. Gordon Ramsay on them, uh, angry, 
uh, but I'm not going to do that. That's not my character, is it? Look at me. Anyway, uh, so doing, uh, what are these things called? Kank? Uh, kank uh, someone told me what these uh, the blobs on the trees are, and I can't remember what it is. Kankle. I want to say cankles, but that's like fat ankles, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, um, the blobs, the blobby bits again. I'm, oh, no. Uh, blobby bits. Anyway, uh, I'm, I did have some other questions. Oh yeah, um, uh, with your fast computer, if you're sculpting and things like that, and in fact modelling and generally all the work in the viewport, I used to think that it was to do with your graphics card, but it's your processing power apparently. Uh, so a good processor is uh, important. Uh, a good graphics card is important for rendering. So if you want to do any EV stuff and instant renders, or you want quick renders, uh, then a good graphics card. But when you think about it, um, a fast graphics card is only going to save you a few seconds in your render. If you've got a massive render and you're doing lots of animations, then sending it off to a render farm is probably going to be more um, of an efficient way of doing things. So a great graphics card is good and it will help you for your um, instant renders when you're trying to sort of do maybe something like an architectural visualization. You think, what does that look like? And you want a quick render, um, then that will certainly help. So yes, and graphics card is important. But for all this stuff, like sculpting and things like that, apparently it's your uh, processing power that's uh, more important here. Um, I'm assuming RAM must be quite important to keep the shapes in memory. But there's something to do with going above 16 being pointless at the moment, or something like that, I don't know. Uh, I'm really ignorant on these sort of things. Um, so uh, you can comment in the description about how ignorant I am on these things, if you like. Uh, oh, well, thanks for all the anime tips. Lots of people telling me about anime. I haven't got time to watch much at the moment. I have, in my downtime, I've been watching uh, Titans, uh, the new sort of DC thing. It's not, it's not too bad, actually. It's not great. I don't like the female lead. Uh, she just seems a bit weak, even though she's got this like awesomely deadly character. Uh, don't want to put any spoilers there, but uh, you should find that out pretty quick. Um, but she's just sort of a bit weak. I don't know. Uh, you can argue with me in the comments about that one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's good fun. It's on Netflix, so I can watch that. But I'm kind of looking forward to getting into all these uh, anime that people have suggested. Uh, so keep them coming. Keep these ideas coming. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, uh, baking and uh, it's glitchy. Uh, yes, I had a comment the other day. Why is my baking not working? And it was no valid objects. I always get no valid objects the first time I try to bake and then I don't do anything, I just select something else and then select it again and it works. So it's just a bit glitchy, uh, keep trying it. Uh, lots of uh, common issues are things like, uh, oh, you can't be in edit mode. You can't be in edit mode for anything. I think it's to do with their sort of multi object editing. So you can't be in edit mode to bake, so that's an issue. Uh, you've You've got to have your high poly and low poly selected. I know that sounds silly, but you might think you have it selected because sometimes it's highlighted, but you've actually turned off selection. I, I've done that a couple of times, so watch out for that. Uh, lots of uh, little issues like that um, are massively frustrating when it comes to baking. And because it's uh, one of those things that uh, is so glitchy, and if you're new to it, uh, it's, you think, is this me or is this a glitch? And that's uh, the tricky one to, to work out. Uh, that's what I found when I first started baking. Uh, more about baking uh, later. What are we talking about? Uh, anything else here? Um, I said stick to low poly, didn't I? Um, oh, someone asked me how I start off my sculpts. Well, uh, generally, it's um, if I do the get your blob out technique, it's just the subdivided um, cube. Uh, this was on the last one, which I think was a actually, it was a few ago anyway. And uh, most of the time, it's just a cube uh, that's been subdivided. Uh, to five levels and then I apply that and then I start sculpting and I think if you put it uh, because you can go file new and there's like sculpting uh, and if you go to sculpting it will go straight to sculpt mode with a subdivided cube that's subdivided to about five levels so I'm just sort of uh, doing that same thing really uh, so yes uh, that's how I start them off or do check the website for those techniques of skin modifier and metaballs but metaballs I'm going off a bit actually the skin modifier seems to be my go-to these days um, it, it's it, it's a bit glitchy that's the only problem that's why metaballs sometimes a little bit better uh, but generally speaking the skin modifier is a good one I suppose I've been doing lots of characters that's probably why 
uh, the skin modifier is good. Also, with the skin modifier, which I forgot, um, if you copy it um, before you apply it, uh, you can actually make a rig out of it as well, so you can quickly pose your model as well. That's quite a cool idea. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. I've never actually done that, but um, apparently you can just press apply rig or something like that. Um, but I always forget and apply it and then have to make a rig. Uh, what other questions have I got here? Um, I think that's it actually. Yeah, how about that? I've answered, I put quite a few down and then I've answered them all. Yeah, anyway, so here I'm doing a base. I did, I used uh, some brushes this time. I, I haven't been using brushes much for the last few sculpts and I just thought I'd, I always use rock brushes for trees, tree bark, because it kind of looks the same really. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, you'd be surprised how many brushes uh, you don't need in a sense, that sounds odd, but uh, just a few brushes are my sort of go-to brushes. I always go to my rock brushes for just a bit of variation and you can pretty much do that with a noise brush really, um, but I like the rock because it's really nice and varied and interesting. So I use that a lot. I think I kept a lot of my um, uh, baking and sort of fiddling around in this time because I thought people might be interested to see that. Um, someone was mentioning the other day about how I leave my mistakes in. Um, yeah, that's actually just for ease more than anything. Uh, but uh, it's kind of useful as well, isn't it, to see what I'm going through. And I think that's kind of why people are watching my videos. Uh, and of course, I'm really entertaining. Uh, but uh, to see the mistakes and see how I overcome them, I think is... I like to leave those in my tutorials sometimes as well, or make mistakes on purpose. That's what I'm doing, honestly. Uh, I never make mistakes. But anyway, I took this across the Instant Mesh, uh, which is a great tool if you haven't seen that already. I've got a tutorial on that, so just search for Instant, it's instant Mesh, Instant Mesh on my channel. Uh, and uh, when I, ah oh yes, uh, so that's quite good because it converts your model into quads rather than the Decimate, which uses triangles, and that is easier for Blender to unwrap. Um, but here I am, I've unwrapped the model. And I've noticed I'm getting a lot of overlapping UVs, so if I go to paint or when I bake out, there's sort of glitches in the bake. Uh, if you have overlapping UVs, that's a definite must, n uh, must not, uh, a definite no-no. Um, so I was searching around for all these overlapping UVs, and I'm thinking there must be an easier way to sort of cut patches out of my, um, yeah, so make islands. So you've got your islands, and if there's a bit in your island, say it over overlaps each other, surely I can cut these out, but I couldn't find the tools in 2.8 and I didn't quite have enough time to research it um, and I thought how do I not know that already but I think maybe it just doesn't happen as much in 2.79 maybe um, that I've not really had to uh, sort that out and also I tend to prefer to unwrap with marking seams that's just a better way um, to unwrap really um, so this is a sort of rush job the smart UV project and then I couldn't find a way to split and create new islands because any that overlap it's just, it just seems sensible to cut that bit out and move it somewhere else in your um, uh, UV map. Uh, so uh, if anybody knows how I can create new islands, then let me know, please. Uh, that'd be great. Or point me towards a tutorial uh, would be fantastic. Uh, fairly clean bakes. That's nice. I've found a sort of uh, a little tip. Uh, now I talk about cages, and uh, that's the best way to bake. But when you've got your low poly and your high poly, if you just really slightly expand the low poly, uh, because that's uh, that's how baking works, you sort of go out, uh, so let's say you're a low poly, you've got a sphere, let's say, some sort of rock or something, if you're, um, your bake sort of goes inwards, uh, so there's your low poly on the outside and your high poly in it on, on the inside, so if you have a cage, you'd put it on the outside. Uh, and that's, I saw it every, um, every time I sort of have my low poly, I just expand it really slightly with Alt S in edit mode. You can expand it really slightly. I hold down shift to do that. Just so it goes outside that little bit. Uh, and that's because any of the um, high poly mesh that's sticking through, you'll get glitches. Um, that's the most likely place you'll get glitches. So here I am, uh, here I am baking out the, uh, I baked out the cavity or have I? Yeah, I think I've baked out the cavity now and the ambient occlusion, or I'm just about to do it anyway. Uh, nope, I have baked it out because I'm putting a color ramp in. Uh, so, 
In fact, I'm getting confused. There is my cavity map, I can see it now. Uh, so I have, yeah, there we go. And this is where I start thinking I need to put the ambient occlusion in because look, that looks great, doesn't it? The ambient occlusion there. So um, that's what, when I thought I need to bake out the ambient occlusion as well as the cavity map and do them separately. Uh, which you can see me bringing into the low poly version there. Uh, that's probably a bit confusing, sorry about that. Um, but uh, I always had the ambient occlusion, cavity, and they both link in uh, to a mix RGB. Uh, it sort of makes sense. Uh, I think I've got a tutorial on that somewhere about baking. Uh, I thought about putting some colors in and uh, I thought actually I'll just keep it um, black and white sort of thing uh, with some nice lighting uh, because it just looked a bit naff with the uh, different colors and I thought that really I, I want to paint these things uh, it'd be far better uh, and I probably would have painted if Blender wasn't being so awkward with the painting modes and I'm really sure it's down to setting up my nodes before I go into the texture paint tab uh, and it just doesn't like it because when I uh, brought this scene into 2.79 uh, it I could see the sort of texture paint mode setting up weird stuff. Anyway, there's the final piece. I, I'm pleased with this one, it's good fun and not too uh, long as well for a change. So uh, there we go. Uh, so you can see uh, the lighting that I'm doing. So three point lighting with different colors, always nice. Here's the Discord server. So there's some nice uh, lamps and there's lamps, staffs and things. Uh, that looks like Manahu. That's Lyrum, you can always recognize his. Slightly sexual in nature. Uh, beard, uh, like that one. Uh, another staff. Uh, it's less of a sculpt though, that's uh, more just sort of a technical uh, one there, but good. Uh, there's, I can't remember whose that was, but I like the, the sphere elephant. Uh, that, that's nice, I like that. Uh, and there's spherical objects, there's something about them. Uh, and the, they cu make cute cartoony things, that's a lovely one there. Uh, liquid, uh, clever thinking. Uh, nice staff there, nice details. Uh, good work on that one. Uh, love this one. Uh, that is very good with liquid uh, and some nice textures there as well. Uh, nice stuff. I was thinking of doing the hand as well at one point. Uh, interesting one here uh, with the model. It's a three hours work. Good for three hours work. It's my favourite one, uh, this one here. Uh, really nice and the bowl had some nice textures on it. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, good PBR, good use of PBR. So there we have it. Uh, all uh, finished on day 13. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.